Okay, so we are at the Viking Fest. Or we will be at least. We just gotta find a, find a place to park. I'm in the car with a uh, Mark and Ian. What's up? And we, uh, you see those white tents over there? Y'all remember me from uh, Peter Rabbit Review and uh, Smashing Socialism. And the Poke War. Yeah, that too. Let's see, uh, there's a Swedish flag. Uh, two of them. And uh, they usually have a maypole, but I'm not sure where it is. Rocky Mountain Raptor program, that looks neat. Yeah. It is. Oh, it took a lot of sky references today. Sorry, Ian. So, we's here, we finally found a parking. And uh, yeah, that was quite something I like this boat. And it, ooh. But you know the Mary Rose, the British ship that you slipped down to the voyage? Yeah. During the early 8th time? More horn. In the early 60s? Got my drinking horn in my backpack. Tell me what's my belt, belt buckle today. It's like... They said they were worth it for the way to Like them Vikings. Like axes and... Uh, <laughs> and... Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, Society. Oh, weapons. Yes. Yes. All right. So, um, yeah, Valhalla. It's Jarl Vitas in the house. <laughs> of uh, what? Of of where? Of uh, Harmony Hall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So why would they have the, why do they have them different sizes? Different tones. Oh, nice. Um, the big horns, the, the low frequencies travel longer, uh, especially over water. Oh, nice. So that one you might use around the farm. That one you probably use on the ship. Yeah. Did you try the big one? You know I'm not real good at that because it's not my horn. Um, the most common musical instrument to find in Viking Age graves. It's bone flute. Oh, and sweet. And the uh, Latin word for flute is fibula. That's because that's the, the bone you use for making uh, uh, flutes. Yes. The lower leg bone. So I, I uh, found an article. It was, it, was, it was master's thesis in physics, on the physics of uh, uh, woodwind instruments. Yeah, and uh, I went through Google Translator, and then I could read it. And then once I understood the physics, then I could uh, then I could build these. Nice. So this angle here is 35 degrees. And then we've got a plug that collimates the uh, air across that blade. And, and then what it does is splits the uh, column of air, and the one that's inside starts to tumble, and okay. which creates a pressure gradient. So you get buffeting. And, it, and actually, the way the sound holes work is that the, lo the longer the tube, the lower the tone. Oh, wow. Because of the more pressure uh, buffeting it has. Yeah. That is how this sounds. Let me try that. Nice. Hello, sweetie. What species is that? It's a long eared owl. Thank you. Okay. This is a good like a part of it. Um, there are species that we do see here in Colorado, but we typically get them in the winter time. Um, so, not, won't see them anytime um, soon. Uh, they like the really, really cold temperatures, usually, they'll breed and um, live most of their lives up in the Arctic region. They could be so regal. Yeah. This bird was originally injured in 2002. Um, was taken care of at a different raptor center up in Wyoming, and unfortunately they had to close their doors due to lack of funding, which does happen. And so they reached out to us to see if we had any space for him, which we did at the time. Um, so he came to our care. 
Um, he was probably hit by a car, very, very common injury for these guys. Uh, and that unfortunately left him blind on his uh, left side. So oh, you'll wow. see him kind of tilt his head up and do some different looking things with it because he's got to use his good eyes to see. Wow. And I'm sorry. Hey, puppy. But we remind him and my daughter. Our daughter has a nurse. Should see. As always. Thanks. I said I'm proud to be a CSU Ram. I said I'm proud to be a CSU Ram. I said I'm proud. Oh, look at this. God, guns, and guts made America free. Okay, if you guys want to read all that stuff, uh, pause it right now. Alright, look at these cute little things. <laughs> so hairy, it's like the dwarves from Lord of the Rings. You know what? The thing is that Tolkien, when he wrote Lord of the Rings, he was so inspired by the Norse mythology, and this Tolkien, he goes back to Norse mythology. So when they come up to me, they say, oh, Gandalf, maybe a relative to him. Well, like, what do I know? Oh, yeah. Yep. So he I just soon nam til pot via. Well, singer, good then ma vi fa. Good till araos, till gang safa vi mat, i just soon nam. I'll get there. We could say. A Swedish meatball sandwich. Never had one of these before. Is it? Are they gonna dance or just do a fashion show? Do a fashion show. Oh man, tell me for a dance. Some of the boarding things were flying. I got really excited. Do this dancing, don't judge me. You know, part of me just grimaces every time I see like a Viking helmet like with horns on it because Vikings didn't do that. No. Where the heck did that myth come from? It's actually from the Norwegians, but. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> we have more in there. Well, weren't Norwegians Vikings too? They all were the, Scan the Scandinavians, you know, Swedes, like uh, Nor Norwegians, yep. Icelandians. Nice. Ah! I like these mugs. These are good mugs. <laughs> Very good mugs indeed. <laughs> you know, I was looking for a belt buckle for this, but sadly, this place does not have any, which is rather disappointing. But it's. Uh, it's not that big of a deal, honestly. Like, I'll probably just order them online once I uh, get paid, you know, get a job and all that good stuff. I got a job interview, like, the, almost a week ago. And if I get the job, we'll start, like, early July. So, yeah, that's going to be good. <coughs> Excuse me. But, yeah, this thing, like, you drink beer, meat, and wine out of this. It's like, I feel the need. The need for mead.
once you got your sword stuck in. Because of the bump, they have a little pull the shield up.